I love kimchi. In fact, I'm Korean crazy for kimchi. So today we're gonna learn how to make kimchi. Kimchi is a staple in Korean cuisine and it's a traditional side dish made from salted and fermented vegetables, most commonly in napa, cabbage and radishes. The origin of kimchi dates back to nearly 3,000 years ago. In order to preserve food against decomposition, Korean ancestors started fermenting their food in underground pots to prevent it from rotting. Nowadays, there are over 200 different varieties of kimchi and about 1.3 billion kilograms of it are consumed every year. So this is Eric Choi. Eric conducts kimchi workshops every uh, weekend, was it? That's right, yeah. Growing up, my mom and my grandma made kimchi probably three or four times a year. So this is a family recipe that I grew up making with them. I grew up in LA, but I am Korean, right. but we would do this for the entire family in the neighborhood. Kimchi is pretty simple. It doesn't take too many ingredients to make. The most important one would be the Napa cabbage. Right. And this I've actually brined overnight with some salt. So it draws out a lot of that moisture. And then the other ingredients that are primal for the dish would be daikon, ginger, garlic, onions, and then, of course, this is Korean chili flake, and this is what gives it that red color and makes it very spicy. This is just a pureed mix of Korean pear, onion, garlic, and ginger. And this is actually rice powder rice with powder. hot water. And what this does, it helps binds all the ingredients together. This is the same thing you would make mochi with, actually. Ah, okay. Two of the more important ones would be the fermented shrimp, and the fish sauce. And this helps start that fermentation process. Fish sauce is a very Thai thing. Korea is a peninsula, so we're very close to water. Okay. And so we use a lot of seafood products. So it gives it that salinity. So what we're gonna do is cut all these vegetables over here mm -hmm. and mix it with all the ingredients on this side. First thing is the daikon. And we're gonna cut these into blocks and then really thin sticks. So we'll just grab our knife, tuck in our fingers. And you want this to be pretty thin. So you want it about but it's okay if it's not perfect. And then, you want something. Damn, you're like a machine. Like that. I'm gonna leave that here for you. Use this as reference, yeah. That's right. <laughs> there you go. That's perfect. And when I grew up, this is the part I would help my mom and my grandma most with. I think it's because they just didn't want to do it. And as we cut, this is the kind of bowl you're gonna want to put all your kimchi ingredients in. It looks like the stuff you would wash your feet in but this one's brand new. And what we'll do is we'll mix and make the paste in this later. That's good. Consumable. <laughs> Preserving food was one of the earliest ways Koreans ate because... Because it was cold, right? That's right. The like winter... stuff spoils, right? Mm -hmm. And the summers are very hot. And so whether it's a vegetable or a root or seafood, we tend to ferment a lot of our foods. What are the different like, I don't know, variations of kimchi? So mostly it's the ingredient from where the area is and then the level of spice. Some kimchi's actually have no pepper in it at all. It actually isn't spicy. It's oh, like yeah, a it's more of a... It's like a sweet kimchi? Yeah, more of like a sauerkraut kind of a dish. Are you done? Jesus. I think I went too quickly. <laughs> what the? Here, have some of yeah, mine. Like... <laughs> so making kimchi in a Korean family, everyone first of all has their own recipe. Every family has their own secret and it's kind of akin to like an Italian family making their own tomato sauce. Like making kimchi is actually not something Koreans even in Korea do much anymore. It's kind of a dying really? art. Yeah. So next thing we can cut is the onion. What we'll do for this is just start on one end and just thinly slice it all the way across. Do you like Korean food? Uh, yeah. He has to say yes. <laughs> I've been to Korea. <laughs> That's good. That's a good start. <laughs> And the last thing we're gonna just cut up is the green onion. So we're just gonna add all of our ingredients over here into this bucket. We're gonna do four big spoons of the chili. And while you do that, I'll put in one giant spoonful of this. So this is just according to like how salty you want it, right? Exactly. The rice powder mix you're gonna put in is also food or feed for the bacteria. Because there's gonna be all this good lactobacteria in the kimchi. And what they'll do is they'll feed off all the sugars and starches in that. So you mix it with your hands. That's right. And so this will, by the end, just look like a red paste. And the taste of it will be a little more salty than you might want because it has to season the cabbage. Do you have to keep it in like the uh, fridge? Or? Kimchi is best if you leave it out for maybe a day or two. And then after, it could stay in your fridge for probably up to a month. I've heard some kimchis are 100 years old. I don't know if that's true either. So that's perfect. That's exactly what mama would want to see. If you want to, you can- Have a it. taste? Yeah. That's good. Definitely salty. Pretty salty. That's actually okay. As this ripens and ferments, more water from all the vegetables will start to seep out. So we're just about done. All we're gonna do next 
is we're gonna put our cabbage into this bucket as well. We're starting from the back leaves, really season this up well. Do, do you break it? No, you wanna leave it all together. Oh, oh you don't? Mm -hmm. okay. There's a saying in Korea, you can't get married until you know how to make proper kimchi. <laughs> so when you're done pasting all that cabbage, we're just gonna lay it out right here on the plate. Perfect. And that is how you make kimchi. Seth, now we're gonna try a couple different versions of kimchi. This is the one you made today, yep. beautiful. And this white one is called pek kimchi. This one is called gakdogi, which is a radish kimchi. Mm -hmm. And this is called namul kimchi, which is just the leaves of a radish that they made into a kimchi. This is considered kimchi as well? It is. Huh. Which one is like the lightest in flavor that we should like start with? The lightest in flavor would yeah. be the white kimchi. Maybe we'll start there. Well, as you can tell, there's no spice in it. The next one we can try is the gakdogi. So even if you use radish, it's still considered kimchi. It is, because kimchi is a, a name of a dish, of course, but it's also just a method of cooking. So it doesn't have to be just cabbage, right? No, it doesn't. Okay. Now this would be the leaves of a radish that they've turned into a kimchi as well. And kimchi is not ever eaten just by itself. We always eat it with other foods, like the meats we have today. And the most popular way you would eat this when you make kimchi is yeah. with the pork belly, which is called posam. So how grandma would do it, she would get up in here, take a leaf out, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap the pork belly in it. I'm gonna feed oh, okay. you. Okay. No homo, man. No homo. <laughs> so there's like the fattiness of the pork balanced with the spice and acidity. Yeah, so a lot to take in. All right, thank you, Eric. Thanks for teaching us how to make kimchi and how to actually like eat kimchi. Like and subscribe to our channel for more food. You can also book this Teach Me How to Kimchi workshop in the link that we have in the description. So check it out.